Hello, hello again, friends and loyal Wolfpack members. Chaos Wolf here, and welcome back to the Elite Dangerous 2.2 beta server. And we're going to have a look at the Beluga liner once again, but this time somewhat A rated. Now, I haven't done the best job I could potentially do with this, but this is such a different ship, and I'm not quite sure how I really want to set it out. What do I mean? Well, let's have a look at the hard points. I went and outfitted it with five medium turreted beam lasers. So this would allow it to defend itself. Now it is an interesting way of outfitting the ship but I'm not convinced it is actually the best way of doing things because let's not forget this is actually a passenger liner. So what I'm going to go and do is I am actually going to go and sell all of these. There we go, that's all of them gone. Now, you may be wondering why I went and sold everything, because now we've got a lot of spare power. Now, the reason I went and sold them is because if we go into here, I only had enough power to actually run two shield boosters. So what I'm thinking is, potentially, we could actually go and fill out completely on shield boosters. And let's just see if we can actually go and do that. And judging by the look of how the bar at the bottom is actually incrementing up, I do believe we can. There we go. Look at that. We're actually virtually a nanometer under our maximum power output. Our maximum power output is 25.2 megawatts. What we've actually been using, what we're actually using up, is 25.12 megawatts. So we're 0 0.08 megawatts under our maximum potential. And this still has us with a 20.59 light year jump range. So that's not bad at all. So this ship with a class 6 shield generators with all these shield boosters is going to be having a hell of a lot of shield strength. I mean, let's have a look at this. We've got 449.3. Now, I'm not sure that is. I'm assuming megajoules, but I'm not certain. So we'll have to go and see how it goes. But either way, that means that this ship is very, very tanky, at least in how it normally is. Because we have gone and got, as we can see, a 6A shield generator. Now you could go with power play, go with Ashling Duval and get yourself a prismatic shield generator as well, which would go and increase your overall protection even more. And let's not forget you'll have a really nice cool green shield. But as you can see, I've still got two economy class passenger cabins. I've upgraded one of these to a first class cabin. Now, the first class cabin only has a, a cabin capacity of 8, as opposed to the 32 of the economy class. We've got luxury cabins with 6 capacity, 4 capacity on the business. And down here we've just got one class 3 fuel tank, a class 3 fuel scoop. Although this feels really kind of... Like it's not going to be doing all that much with a 0 0.18 ton a second fuel scoop rate. Yeah, doesn't feel like it's going to be doing a great deal. A small cargo rack just in case you need to take anything on and a docking computer just because I'm curious to see how well this thing actually docks with a docking computer. So let's go out and go and see how the maneuverability of this has changed. Okay, so here we are back outside again, and first thing I want to go and do again is to go and try a pitch test. We've gone and got the little widget as per usual here. So let's go and line that up with local star, go up to the sweet spot, and what is the speed of the sweet spot now? Okay, we've gone up by about 10 meters per second with A rating the thruster, so that's interesting. And what we're going to go do is we're going to go and do a full 360 degree revolution and just see how well it feels. Now I can't say it feels all that much different. It does feel a bit better but not that much. There we go, we've passed the star. So again if you want to go and time that and calculate the, tur the actual turning that's fine. I'm not going to go and do it. I'll let you do it if you want to. So here we are, stopped with full A-rated thrusters. Let's go and see how quickly we can go and accelerate to full speed. Mm, 
Now, I don't know about you, but that felt a good sight faster. And we're going to a nice healthy cruising speed of 211 meters per second, which is faster than what it was previously. So let's reline up. Let's go and go for a boost. And we go up to 295 meters per second. We'll keep boosting. See if we can beat that. 296. Can we get any better than 296? No, I think that's our lot. And I've got to say, I still like that boost sound. But let's give it a go again and see how much a normal boost tone would do. There we go. And again, we do manage to flip with this ship, so it's fairly manoeuvrable. I'm actually quite pleased with that. And let's go and see again how well a boost fly assist off turn would do. So it's going to be boost, fly assist off, throttle back and turn. And throttle forward again. There we go. That did feel a lot more responsive. So, fully A-rating this out, it does feel a lot more nimble. Although, like I said, we're only doing this in a few basic tests out in open space. So, let's go set this thing down and see how well it goes in docks once fully A-rated. So, I am curious to see how this ship will actually work with a docking computer. I've got to say, the docking computer seems to be doing its job quite well. So there was no trouble getting in. Admittedly, I did line it up myself. And we're coming down for the dock and... Yeah, it seems to be nice and slow and steady. Although not so slow. Just nice and steady. And there we go. It does seem that Frontier may have actually upgraded the the pathfinding for the docking computers again because that felt very smooth and it didn't turn me it didn't turn me around to try and re queue me to come in it just seemed to go nice and smooth maybe more people will start using docking computers now i don't know perhaps not but anyway let's get into the hangar and see what i think about this ship once it's been fully a rated Okay, so what do I think about the Beluga once it's been fully A-rated? Well, again, I was extremely surprised at how nimble and manoeuvrable this ship actually is. I really did not expect it to handle the way it does. I was expecting it to feel a lot, lot heavier, especially for the size of the ship. But it handles so well that it's really a pleasure to fly. Now I am curious to see how it will handle if we go and set it up for maximum jump range, but I'm not too worried about that at the moment. So what do you guys think? Do you think you're going to be picking up one of these ships? I think I may do in the future if I want to go and do some passenger missions, because it's a very, very agile little ship. Well, I say agile, it's agile for its size. Like I said last time, I was fully expecting this thing to handle like a cutter. But it doesn't. It really surprised me. What do you guys think? Do you think you're going to be getting one of these ships? What would you be using it for? Would you be using it for a cargo runner? Do you want to use it for a passenger ship? Do you want to go and mod it out to just make it a completely crazy explorer ship so you can explore in style? Let me know, as always, down in the comments and I'll get back to as many of you as I can. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Like the video if you've liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Hungry for more beta content? Go and hit that lovely subscribe button. You'll get notifications from whenever I release new videos. Not just from the beta server, but any other series that I'm currently doing. But anyway, guys, I've been Commander Chaos Wolf. You guys have been epic. I will see you soon. And until next time, Commanders, keep flying and stay shiny.